Hi everyone, today we're talking about study strategies for IB Biology, so let's just get straight into it. So across all of the sections that I'm going to be talking about today, then the overarching theme is going to be use the syllabus. Um, out of all of the IB subjects that I studied, then IB Biology by far has the best syllabus. Um, and I say that because it's really in depth in terms of covering all of the chapters but also each individual dot point in the syllabus is very descriptive in terms of what you need to know so basically as you read each of the dot points in the syllabus then that's telling you what you need to know for the final exams so it's quite different from something like the psychology syllabus where you know you have these dot points but they're more so general themes that you need to know and you need to know a lot more than just those brief dot points that they have in the syllabus whereas the biology syllabus is really like a step-by-step -step guide of every single tiny piece of information that you need to know for the final exams. The biology syllabus is also for each chapter broken down into different sections like understanding dot points or application dot points and what's really great is that because the syllabus is so detailed then it means that often when I was doing exam past questions then they would use the same key term in the exam question as they did in the original syllabus and so what that means is that I didn't have to when I read the question I already knew which part of the syllabus they were asking me to recite or to give the facts from or the definition from I didn't actually have to interpret the question on the day if that makes sense so I saw the question recognized which syllabus dot point it was trying to assess and then just regurgitated all of the information that I had memorized under that syllabus dot point and so because of that I suppose structure that they have within the syllabus and then the fact that they also instigate that within the final exams themselves it meant that when I was making my notes, when I was in class, when I was studying for tests, when I was creating study resources, you'll see throughout that all of them are made structured around the syllabus dot points. Um, and I think that that's quite an effective way to do it just because um, you get that little added, I suppose, uh, support or advantage during the exam that I spoke about that sometimes you don't even need to understand the question, so to speak, to know what they're asking for. So now that we've covered that overarching theme, then I thought it would be good just to walk through from start to finish of how I prepared for all of my biology tests, exams, everything that I think helped me get a seven in the end. Um, so we're gonna start before class. So when I started the IB I and had been taking biology for a couple of weeks, I realized very quickly that it wasn't going to work out to make my notes in class because if you've looked through the syllabus, then you'll realize that there is a lot of content in IB biology. I think especially if you're doing the HL course, then it's kind of notorious as one of the IB subjects with the largest amount of content. Um, I don't think that should scare you off because I think in general if I compare it to something like chemistry then the content itself isn't challenging, as challenging, um, but the amount of content does mean that there's a large volume to get through and that naturally leads to a very fast paced classroom setting at least what I found so what I realized was okay it's not going to work for me to make my notes and receive this information for the first time in class because I just wasn't processing anything that was happening in the class when the teacher was speaking because I was just trying to like write furiously and like I couldn't process all of this new information so um, I started to make my notes before class and I did this by using the PowerPoint that our teacher uh, went through with us during class as well as with my textbook. So I kind of had my textbook as a paper resource so that I could work without a screen sometimes but then working through the PowerPoint was really helpful because it meant that the structure of my notes aligned with the structure and kind of the order that my teacher would be going through concepts um, in class as well. Um, I think if you're planning on doing this kind of flipped classroom style of learning, then I think BioNinja is also a really great resource. And the fact that it organizes its content by the syllabus dot points, I think is the most helpful aspect about it. So before class, I would make my notes and I would say that I would strongly recommend making your notes in a format where you can draw so whether that's on physical paper or if you have something like an ipad um, just because 
biology is a very visual subject. There are lots of diagrams in it, um, lots of pictures and illustrations, um, and also the fact that there are a lot of exam questions which actually ask you to do drawings in them. So whether that's drawing sort of like glucose structures or, you know, the formation of a peptide bond, then you have to be able to draw these things from memory. And so for me, then it made more sense to already be actively practicing that drawing process from day one when I was when I was making my notes rather than just copying and pasting in an image of what I would have to draw but not actually kind of getting that practice and already familiarizing myself because I think um, when you actually do those drawing your drawings yourself then you pick up on a lot of details that you would otherwise miss um, also I think that there's just like a lot of opportunity for a lot of pretty pictures in biology so if you enjoy spending those time that time on your notes and like really I suppose sinking into that process of note making then biology has a lot of um, opportunities to have very like illustrative and um, interesting note formats. So I would have my paper notes, I would draw all of my diagrams and then the final step before going to class was as I was going through then if any questions about the content came up then I would have sticky notes and I would stick them with my question onto the page and I would sort of leave a space for me on the paper to write the answer that my teacher would give in class um, and that kind of wrapped up what I would do to prepare for each class. So then when I arrived at class then it was much better because it meant that I already had my notes there in front of me and so that was I knew that in my notes it contained the sort of objective information that you needed from the textbook and from the PowerPoint. Um, and so what I was really listening for in class was my teacher's subjective interpretation on the content, whether that be in terms of what we should focus on in the syllabus, like what is most likely to be assessed, or whether it was more so just like an interesting explanation of a content that had already I had already learnt about but was just kind of giving a bit more context to that. Um, um, so that meant that as I was going through class then I wasn't furiously writing notes I was more so annotating the notes that I already had with just these extra comments and then of course during class I would ask those questions that I had on my sticky notes um, and kind of fill in the, the gaps in my existing notes. So the other major question that I would be asking in class is specifically for clarification on the syllabus dot points because um, often the understanding dot points are quite clear but the application and other dot points tend to be a little bit more vague and so sometimes I would have to ask my teachers you know between the different sets of information that's presented in the textbook versus the PowerPoint versus BioNinja you know what actually is the information that you know we're likely to be assessed on or should really be sort of the takeaway from the syllabus dot point and so I think that that was really helpful to kind of get that clarification on the syllabus so that you know when I looked back later and was able to tick off that syllabus dot point I could look at it and be like yes I understand what that dot point is trying to get me to understand. I'll also mention now that the way that I organized my notes was I wrote them on paper and often a kind of um, barrier that people find to writing things on paper is the fact that you know you end up with this really chunky folder um, with all of your notes and obviously that becomes very heavy and far too heavy to transport back and forth between home and school and so the way that I kind of got around that was I had my paper notes that I would put based on chapter into a plastic sleeve and then put that into another protective sleeve and then it's that small um, chapter of notes that I would take into class with me rather than taking in my whole folder of notes. So I found that that kind of helped in terms of um, being able to transport things to and from school. So before class I made my notes, in class I was annotating those notes with my teacher's answers to my questions and any of their sort of subjective interpretations of the syllabus and that meant that by the time I finished class then I had a really solid understanding of the material and also a broad summary under each of the syllabus dot points and I could kind of tick off that chapter and say yes I have covered all everything that the syllabus requires me to know and so it was at that point after class where I felt comfortable making my study materials which for me were flashcards. So the reason why I used flashcards and why I think they're quite a popular study method for biology um, and very effective is because biology has these two um, I suppose 
modalities within it. The first one is sort of the more big picture thinking. So when you think about big processes like respiration or photosynthesis or transcription and translation, things like that, they're kind of your uh, big picture processes that you need to be able to explain conceptually. Um, and then you have the small details, which are more like the examples, the case studies, the specific numbers that you need to know, like um, 50S ribosome or something like that. Um, and it's those, I think, flashcards can help with both of them because for the big picture stuff then being able to discuss those processes when you aren't given any context I think is the tricky thing because I would often be able to understand them in class when we were having a broader discussion but then when I was by myself having to explain them without any context just okay explain transcription to me then that was what I found challenging so flashcards kind of emulate that process um, and then for the small details obviously flashcards are very effective for quickly um, checking back and forth that whether you've memorized something and easily testing yourself which I think when you're talking about memorizing those really small details it's just that repetition which is really going to uh, get them to stick into your brain so the way that I organize my flashcards is that I um, took my notes which were all organized under headings for the syllabus dot points and then I basically transferred one syllabus dot point onto one flashcard. Sometimes the syllabus dot points would make take more than one flashcard but it was basically a one-to-one -one. Um, and then I would rewrite the syllabus question into a question on the front of the flashcard and I think that that was helpful because it started to get me into the mind of a marker to kind of think okay looking at this syllabus stop point what are potential questions that they could ask me in the final exam on this so could they ask me to define a certain term could they ask me to explain a certain process could they ask me to give an example of this thing so I was kind of thinking about all of the different ways they could ask the content that was contained within this syllabus dot point and what that left me with is that for each chapter I had a little stack of palm cards and I would sort them and store them within the plastic sleeves of the um, that I had put my sort of pages of notes inside and then when I got to the end of a uh, chapter then I would take all of the um, flashcards out of their respective plastic sleeves, put them in a pile together, and then I would have just sort of a big pile for a single chapter. Then over time, obviously, as I moved through the different chapters over the two years, then I ended up with a big chunky pile of flashcards where by the end I had a flashcard for every single dot point which was in the syllabus. So the way that I actually used these flashcards in my revision was that obviously I would work through them, I would test myself on the flashcards, but specifically I would test myself in a very active way. So I would either um, say my answers aloud or I would write down my answers on a whiteboard. And I found that those two things were helpful because I think that those uh, tactile elements or vocal elements kind of helped the information stick a little bit better rather than it all just being conceptual and in my head. Um, but also I think that using um having these sort of maybe objective <laughs> reproductions of the information meant it meant that I couldn't sort of lie to myself or trick myself into thinking oh yeah like I said that or I would have said that part of the answer if I had known I got the general gist of things you know if I had said it or if I had wrote it down if I wrote down my answer then it was very clear to me when I looked on the answer on the back of the flashcard and thought oh actually no that very that small detail there I didn't actually say that okay I have to put that into the difficult pile or the could not answer pile. I think a whiteboard is also a really handy tool to have for writing out your flashcards because of all of the diagrams that we have to draw in biology. Um, so, you know, rather than wasting reams and reams of paper, then having the whiteboard is a really easy way to very quickly be able to uh, practice drawing those things. And that's how I kind of worked through the flashcards. So every time I would test myself, um, I kind of worked through for the final exams sequentially because I think that the syllabus does build upon itself from, you know, the sort of molecular and cellular level all the way to ecosystems and kind of human physiology. Um, and so I worked through sequentially and I would put things as I answered them into an easy, moderate or difficult pile. And then obviously the easy pile I didn't look at again. Those were the ones that I just knew the answer, answer already. And then the moderate and difficult ones, I would just continue to go through them until eventually they also got moved to the easy pile. Um, and 
so I think that once I got to my final exams, kind of similar to what I mentioned in my first video on what helped me achieve the 45, then I think it was really to have this mindset of learning the content continuously because it does build on itself throughout the two years. And so it meant that since I was continually using these flashcards and making my notes and making the flashcards and consolidating with my teacher and, you know, really making sure that I was internalizing that information as I went, then by the time I got to the final exams, it was really only the application dot points and the other random dot points in the syllabus that I was really studying intensely with these flashcards. So the understanding dot points, I find that they're the most basic, often their definitions or basic explanations of the processes. And even if I needed a little bit of time with the flashcards to put kind of the um, the icing on the cake to, you know, know the very specific details of the definition or the very specific details of a process, then because I had done this sort of continuous learning throughout the two years, then by the time I got to the final exams, then if someone had just kind of asked me, okay, explain transcription or explain respiration, then I would have been able to give them a general answer to that question. And so that really sort of cut down, I think, the um, amount of um, stress associated with the IB final exams um, or at least the IB biology final exams because I think most people because of the amount of content that IB biology does present to you would agree that it is impossible to cram specifically or especially for the biology exams and so at least that was how I managed the volume of content was to go through and try to learn the understanding dot points continuously and then towards the end my focus was more so on the application and other random dot points or other random little points that maybe hadn't been reinforced or didn't build on one another uh, in the same way and so because of that before a couple of weeks before the final exam in addition to working through my my um, flashcards, then I also created a few summary documents. So I'll just read out which ones I had. So I had a summary of all of the experiments and industrial processes that we needed to know, all of the calculations that we might be asked about, any of the micrographs that we might have to identify, and then also any of the reactions. Um, so the word equations or the actual chemical equations that we could be asked about. Um, and so these were kind of the parts of the syllabus that I recognized that I hadn't places much emphasis on learning throughout the two years and so for me this was kind of a way to have another way to access my memories of that syllabus so everything else I kind of learnt in terms of the chapters and you know I kind of talked through the fact that when I looked at a question then most of the time the way I approached it was okay what chapter is this coming from is this an ecology question is it a cellular biology question you know is it a human physiology question and then sometimes I would be able to pinpoint the exact syllabus dot point that it was asking me for as well but on the occasions where I couldn't do that then these other summary documents provided me with an, an alternate strategy to approach these questions um, because I could think okay I'm not sure which chapter this is from, but I know that this is an industrial process or I know that this is a calculation that I have to do. So let me think in my mind, try to picture that summary document and remember the content that was on there. And these summary documents were only sort of one page documents. So it was much easier to tap into my memory of those summary documents compared to the hundreds of flashcards that I had on all of the chapters um, within the syllabus. And then when it came to the biology past papers, then like with most of my subjects, I didn't touch the past papers until my like true final exam revision. So that was like within sort of the month and a half before the IB exams. Um, and when I did do them, then I found that just going through the, the syllabus really methodically, as I've described with the notes and the flashcards, then it meant that most, I could answer most of the exam questions quite easily. So it wasn't sort of something like chemistry, I would say, even though I had, I had a strong theoretical understanding of chemistry, then it was quite a steep learning curve going through the chemistry exam questions, just because the format that they use means that they can ask questions in a way that kind of hides which part of the syllabus you're supposed to be using for the question, or they're just like different formats that you haven't seen before. Whereas the biology exam is very true to the biology syllabus. So I found that having 
kind of prepared myself for all of the syllabus dot points then when I went into the exam I was like oh okay this is exactly the same or so, even some of the questions from the IB exams were exactly the questions that I had predicted on my flashcards based on the syllabus dot points um, but during the exams there were just a couple of questions which I came across where I was like oh I don't remember that I don't remember seeing that in the syllabus and so then those ones I put on another summary document of things I did not know um, so that was just kind of a way for me to record those things which might have you know slipped through the cracks somewhere in my process of reviewing the syllabus. Also similar to what I talked about in my video about IB maths then I think it's really important to take the time to really go through and understand the mistakes that we make in practice assessments and so throughout the entire two years and also when I was doing practice papers um, right before my final exams then what I would do is I would write all of my mistakes that I had made on the front page of the paper and sometimes I would also make flashcards based on these mistakes so that I had um, a way to study and reinforce these key pieces of information and I found that this was really helpful because I stored all of these practice assessments and corrections and palm cards alongside all of my other notes in that large folder and that meant that when it came to preparing for my final exams then I was able to flick through all of the assessments that I've done over two years and have a really quick way to review all of the most common mistakes that I had previously made and the areas that I found most challenging and that I would therefore have to uh, spend more time studying. So that was kind of my process from um, beginning to end of the IB and if the overarching theme to open this video was that it's good to review the syllabus and you should be checking it at every stage of your revision, then the overarching theme I'd like to close with or for you to stick in your mind is that um, biology is everywhere. And so I think that this really creates a fun way to engage with the content. If you just kind of open your eyes to the natural world around you, you know, once we started learning content in class then I found that I started to see examples of it everywhere so I would see the raindrops running down a window and I would be thinking of the cohesive and adhesive properties of water or I would see the green in a park and I would be thinking about chlorophyll and why green is such an advantageous color because of the wavelengths of light or I would be eating and I would think about the um, nutrient composition of the food and the enzymes that my like body would need to use to break that down and how it would use those nutrients in my body so you know if you kind of I suppose open yourself up to seeing biology in the world around you then I think you'll be surprised at how often it crops up and I think it creates this very um, natural engagement with the process and almost an engagement with the content and I think it creates this almost um, serendipitous form of spaced repetition because things won't appear in your life in the same order that you're studying them necessarily. So, you know, you might be doing the ecology topic and, you know, all of a sudden you're making a fried egg and thinking about protein denaturation. So, you know, I think that over time, as you go through the syllabus, then you'll build up this bank of knowledge about more and more concepts within biology. And so you can really start to, I think, see the world through a new light and start to see science everywhere and I think that that's a really cool element if you're studying biology at the moment or you're thinking about it um, I hope that you get to have that experience of really finding this um, love of the subject based on how it can start to explain things in your own life in a more um, scientific way it's almost like seeing the microscopic or the invisible forces around you which I think is very cool so yeah that was kind of my whole process for IB biology if you have any other questions then feel free to ask um, but otherwise hopefully there'll be some more IB videos coming soon